Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and on today's tips, I'm going to take you through the basics of learning how to TIG weld. The unit I'm going to be using for this demonstration is going to be the Longevity 200DX with my water cooler, and I do have the foot pedal plugged in. Uh, another thing to remember is when we do plug in the foot pedal to the machine, that it bypasses it. So. This basically right here is the rheostat or the amperage control and you can see the setting that I have it on. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to work puddle control on steel and we're going to get a puddle started and then the next demonstration we'll start running a bead on top just to practice our bead width and our bead control, uh, control and the heat as we go through it. So let's get started. Talk about hand positions. Basically you want your hand to be comfortable where you're welding so maybe you'll want to do a run through and see how you like it. We'll talk a little bit about hand position, what, what's comfortable for you. As you can see right here we're probably about 87 degrees so I'll take this and I'll, I'll just put a little tweak in it so I get about a 90 sh for up and down and then I want to lay back about 10 to 15 degrees uh, you do notice when I am filming that I, I'm kicked back to about 20 degrees. I do that so the camera could actually see what we're doing and the direction of travel. Um, get comfortable, whatever hand position, you know, you might use this type of position sometimes and you might, you know, use the cup uh, called walking the cup to get in there and do a specific job. But for the most part, I set myself up. I want to make sure I'm comfortable. I want to make sure I have room for my welding rod and get in there. Uh, with the 16th tungsten, that means I want to be away from the material about a 16th of an inch. So it's real, real tight tolerance. And we'll get in there and we'll just basically establish a puddle and dip and then move but make sure you're comfortable doing it and it's always once again nice to do a run through to make sure that where you're going you can you're gonna travel and not maybe not run out of room uh, I do tend to wear a glove on my right hand the hand that I normally hold the torch with but it is good to practice uh, left and right hands up and down um, what we're doing is just kinda getting you started right here on the table and then we'll go from there what we have here is a piece of 1010 mild steel and I've sanded off some of the mill scale so we got a clean nice surface to work with. I'm going to take my 2% serrated tungsten, sharpen to a point. I'm flowing right at 6 liters per minute and what we're going to do is we're going to see what it's like to establish a puddle. So I'll come in, I'll get in position get where I want to be and hammer down. As you can see we're starting to melt and we have formed a little puddle. Then I will back off and I don't move the shielding gas. I let it stay there and post flow. And that way that we don't get a uh, toxic weld or weld with inclusions in it as it's cooling. My post flow is set to about three, and I'm going to turn that up to about four right now. So now that we got metal melting, I'm going to take some filler rod, which is ER70 S2. It's in 16, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start a puddle, and then I'm going to dab and add a little bit to it. So we're melting again. And I'm just going to dab, and then now I'm going to back off. Now basically that's our first little uh, little piece there. And I'm just going to kind of do that again, and I'm going to move a little bit. basically running your first beads. What we're looking for is we're looking for bead width. We're looking at every time you move about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth that you get a nice little distinguished C pattern. And you're going to start playing with that just making sure you can actually melt metal and start getting ready to start sticking two pieces together. 
key to TIG welding is good practice. Uh, getting down and wetting the metal, making sure that you're establishing a good puddle, you have enough heat in it. I like to start low and work up to, to heat um, so you don't blow something away on a project. Get your puddle established and then add filler and then move about an eighth of an inch and then puddle establishes again and dip and move and you'll get a rhythm and some people travel real hot and fast, some people travel slow and basically your weld bead is kind of like your signature, it's your weld signature, your weld characteristic and uh, that depends on how you pause and how you freeze the metal when you move away from it. So get out in the shop and practice and I'm going to do, a, this is probably going to end up being about a 10 part series of all the different types of TIG welding but this is Basics 101, and then I'll take you up from there. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and I'll catch you here next time.